good morning, class. Um, as you're coming in and getting seated, please look to the board for your warm-up. You're going to have your normal three to five minutes. And you're going to define these words in your journals. So you're going to define the word revising and define the word proofreading. And tell me a little bit about how they affect your writing. All right, so three to five minutes. Um, it'll be on the timer. And go ahead and start. Let me know if you need, have any questions about the directions. All right, it looks like most of you are done. So who would like to share their definition of these two words? Yes. Who wants to agree or disagree? Okay, go ahead. Right. So I'm going to give you my definition of these two words. You guys are, have some really interesting things to say. So revising and proofreading both have to do with improving and uh, making your writing better. So the difference is that revising is about making big changes, asking big questions about organizational structure and the content of your writing. Does this actually make sense within this essay? Do I need to expand on an idea more? Um, or is a certain idea repetitive with another one? And making those big changes. Proofreading is the stuff that we usually do during warm-ups. We do those sentence editing um, exercises where you take what's on the board and you uh, work on the grammar, the punctuation, the capitalization. Those are all proofreading things that you might uh, miss when you're working on your own writing and someone else can read through and help you find, like, oh, you missed a comma here. And those are pretty simple. So what we're going to work on today is um, you're going to get out, or well, I'm going to pass out your um, star booklets and practice answer sheets. And we're going to go over the next lesson. So who wants to help me pass out the, the booklets? Thank you. All right, so the one that we're going to do today is we're going to be looking at this one. Longer lunch, please. So. Go ahead and flip to the page. It's on page 40. What you're going to do is you're going to take the next 10 minutes and you are going to um, partner up with the person sitting next to you and read the uh, essay aloud to each other. It's about four paragraphs long, so what I would suggest is Start with one person reading the first paragraph, then switch, have the second person read the second, and go back and forth until you're finished. So let's take the next 10 minutes to go ahead and do that, all right? All right, so your 10 minutes is up, and it looks like most of you are done. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is take the next 15 minutes and continue to work with your partner to go over the questions that come right after. There are questions one through five. So you have 15 minutes to answer five questions. Read over the questions with your partner. Work on them together. Um, and see if you can come to a conclusion about what those answers are. I will be coming around to each of you and um, making sure that you're understanding. If you have any questions, you can ask me when I get to you. Um, if there's something that you are really stuck on and need my help, just move on to the next one, and when I get to you, we can work through it together. All right, go ahead and start. You have 15 minutes. Okay, so I've been going around talking to some of you, and you seem to be getting most of the questions without any trouble. But the one thing I'm noticing is that you're not filling them out on your answer sheet. So remember that one of the skills that we practiced um, as we've been going over the STAR test is that you're going to mark your answer on your booklet and in your answer sheet. So make sure that you're doing that with every question that you and your partner come up with, okay? All right, class, so your 15 minutes is up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to discuss what we think the answers are as a class. So for this first one, I'm going to kind of go through my thought process and how I would go through this question. And then for the next four, we're going to take a poll of the class and see if we're all on the same page. Um, and you'll talk me through how you went through answering the question, all right? 
So for number one, the answer or the question is, what is the most effective revision to make in sentence three? So one of the things that I'm now going to look at is I would go back to my story. Go back to um, the essay called Longer Lunch, Please, and read sentence three. Sentence three says, I am convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and need to recharge their brains with physical activity. So, I just read what the original sentence three is, and I'm going to read through each of the, the uh, answers that are provided. So A, I am convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and then allowed them enough time to recharge their brains with physical activity. And that seems to make some sense to me, but I'm going to re read all of the answer choices just in case. I am convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and recharge their brains with physical activity. Again, that one sounds pretty good as well. Um, so C is, I'm convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal that recharged their brains with physical activity. Um, and see, that one doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because when it says that recharge their brains with physical activity, well, the good meal isn't recharging their brains with physical activity. So that one doesn't make as much sense to me. So I'm going to cross that one out right away because I know that it's not as good as A or B. And remember, we said that we can cross out answers that we know aren't right, so we have a better chance of getting the right one. So the last answer is answer D. It says, I'm convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal because they need to recharge their brains with physical activity. Again, eating a good meal is not the same as physical activity. So both may recharge their brains, but the good meal does not recharge their brains with physical activity. So again, that one doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to cross that one out. So now, after using that skill that we learned of crossing out answers we know aren't right, I'm down to only two possible correct answers. So what I'm going to do again is go back and read my original sentence three and see if I can figure out what was uh, a mistake in the original and then see which of those answers made more sense. Um, so the original sentence three again was, I'm convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and need to recharge their brains with physical activity. So that sentence says that students would do better in school with a midday break because it would allow them enough time to eat a good meal and that they need to recharge their brains with physical activity. So I'm looking for a sentence that's going to tell me that those are two separate things but both uh, fulfill the same goal. So if I'm rereading answers A and B, A says, I'm convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and that allowed them enough time to recharge their brains with physical activity. That does get to both of the needs I have, that they need to be allowed to have a good meal and allowed to have physical activity. Um, the only thing about that one is that it's a little bit wordy uh, and a little bit repetitive. So answer B says, I'm convinced that students would do better in school if they had a midday break that allowed them enough time to eat a good meal and recharge their brains with physical activity. So if I'm looking at that, it sounds like B is the best answer, answer choice because it gives us the idea that they need enough time to eat a good meal and they need to recharge their brains with physical activity, but it can say it all in a um, much shorter, clearer, and concise way. So the answer for number one is B. Does everyone understand how we got there? Okay. Does anyone have, want to argue for a different answer? Good. Okay. So who would like to tell me what you think the answer is to number two? Okay. And why did you say that answer? Good. Does anyone want to argue with her that the answer to number two should be something different? Right. Okay, so for number two, you said that the answer was F. How did you decide that the answer was F? And what's, um, of this, which of the skills that we've talked about did you use? 
Right, good. So the question asks us to add the following idea to the second paragraph, which is sentences four through nine. And it asks, where is the most effective place to add this sentence? So you're exactly right. The first thing you're going to want to do is go reread that second paragraph and, and read this sentence that she wants to add. Some resort to the faster all cart line to grab chips and a drink. Others skip lunch altogether. And see if you can find the best place for that to go. And that's an organizational idea of revision, right? Good. That's a great job. And you're exactly correct. The answer is F. So who wants to tell me what they what their group decided to do for answer three and or for question three and um, and what strategy did you use to get to that answer? Yes. Good. Yes. So the question is asking us to um, saying that the writer wants to add detail to to the idea she expressed in, in sentence ten and which would be the best um, follow and support. Which of, the, which of the sentences could be the best to follow and support sentence 10? So what you would do, exactly, go back and read sentence 10. And it might even help to read that whole paragraph to understand what she was talking about and what ideas she may have already expressed um, in the previous paragraph, which we read for question 2, uh, so that we know exactly what she needs to expand on. Because it wouldn't be helpful if we had one of these answers that uh, repeated an earlier idea. We also have to make sure that we're looking at uh, answers that are completely irrelevant. So things that are off the wall and don't add anything. That don't, uh, add, that don't even fit into the essay that we're writing about having a longer lunch. So you're exactly right. The answer was B. Um, can I get someone to tell me what they got for question four and how they got there? Yes. Good. Yeah, that's that's great. This this one is a little bit longer, and you're really trying to find the question is what's the best to add to insert credibility. So it just can't be any quote that supports it. You have to find a credible quote, um, something that makes. A lot of sense for now. So this was a great place to uh, cross out answers that don't make sense. So one of the first ones you could cross out is that the quote from Plato, who's a philosopher that lived more than 2,000 years ago. How relevant is that to having longer lunch periods in a 21st century school? Maybe not so much. Um, but you're right, there, that quote about uh, from Dr. John Brady, a professor at Harvard Medical School, is very credible. And it also fits uh, the sentence. So why, why did we choose answer F versus answer H? Because answer H talks about the World Health Organization. And that seems pretty credible, right? So why did we not choose that one? Exactly. The, World Health, the answer H from World Health Organization doesn't actually fit what we're talking about. The one from Dr. John Ratty talking about exercise providing an unparalleled stimulus, creating an environment in which the brain is ready, willing, and able to learn is great because that's what the author is arguing. They're arguing that students need time for exercise in the middle of the day to recharge their brains and make them ready to learn. So that's exactly right. That's why we chose F over H. So the strategies that we use here is crossing out ones that we could tell right away didn't make sense, and then also going back to our um, essay and rereading those sentences in that paragraph to make sure that what we're uh, arguing made sense. So who wants to explain to me um, number five? Right. This, uh, this one is, um, it may seem a little bit closer to proofreading because it's not adding a sentence or taking out an idea. It's talking about just the words. So which is the best choice of words to, act, to use in sentence 18? Uh, but that word choice 
is very important in revision because it's not about spelling. It's not asking which spelling of the word is correct. It's asking which word actually makes more sense and makes that idea more powerful. Uh, so you said C. Does anyone want to disagree with that? We all got C, you're right. Is changing promotion to performance. Uh, and that's a big one to just go back to your story, go back to the essay again. And that's one of those strategies that for this type of question is almost always going to be what you want to do. You're going to want to go back. And so this one says sentence 18. You're going to reread sentence 18. And let's reread re it and see if we can find why that makes more sense. So sentence 18 says, I believe that if students had this opportunity, they would be more motivated and alert in their afternoon classes and overall promotion would improve. So what does promotion mean? Yeah, it's like what you get when you're moving from a lower job to a higher job. You're getting a promotion. You're being promoted, you can also be promoted from one grade to the next. Um, so that's about taking something that's low and going higher. So it almost makes sense that she's trying to argue that when you add that midday break, you're going to have uh, lower uh, learning to a higher amount of learning. But in this case, it means per she's trying to talk about that students will perform better, um, not be promoted better. Does that make sense to everyone? Were there any words um, in this section? There were pairs of words. We had opportunity and planning, alert to conscious, promotion to performance, and improve to develop. Were there any words um, out of those eight that you did not understand? That as you were reading, you didn't know what they meant? No? Okay, so what if there were a word in there that you didn't understand? What could you do to help you get through that? Yeah, using context is, is a little bit difficult here because um, if you're reading the, the essay and it's the wrong word choice, that might be a little bit hard to get the context of what the word is. Um, what else could we do? What is one of the resources that we have during the STAR test that we could use to help us figure out the definition of a word? Yeah, exactly, the dictionary. You guys are able to use dictionaries in, in the STAR test. So if you find a word in here that you're not sure, if you didn't know what the difference between promotion and performance was, that might be a really, really good time to go to the front of the room, pick up your dictionary, Check out the definitions, because that might make it very obvious that, oh wait, the word choice that she had in there didn't make sense, so it must be the other one. Or even um, that the change wouldn't make sense. So for opportunity to planning, if you didn't know what those words meant, which clearly you all did, um, but if you looked them up and found that planning makes absolutely no sense, then you know that opportunity was correct. Your homework for tonight is really simple. You're just um, doing your vocabulary list, and that is going to be due tomorrow. And remember, who's going to remind me how long we have until the STAR test? Can we have everyone say it? You got it. Two weeks. So please put your answer document inside of your booklet, just like we have every single day. Put it inside and pass them to the center of your group, and I will pick them up. Um, we're going to play the announcements, and um, when the bell rings, you are allowed to leave.